listening to an, an audio book right now called Rediscover Catholicism. Didn't think I would, but here I am reading it and really actually loving it. So welcome to episode number 60. Welcome to the show. Well, welcome to the show. My name's Will Sinclair, and I'm going to be your host for today. You're listening to The Real Truth About You. It's a show where we help you to become the best version of you possible. And you can go to therealtruthaboutyou.com to get more episodes and downloads and all those kind of things. Kind of updating the site as I go along. So just be patient. Okay, so, well, here we are back on the show again. This is episode number 60. Number 60, uh, don't we have a special fanfare or something like that? No, we don't. We don't have that. We're just going to keep going as we go. And uh, it's just really great to have you here. I'm recording, actually, on my iPad. I'm not in the actual studio itself. I'm recording on an iPad uh, with uh, my usual on-the-go software, and I can't even remember what it's called anymore. But, yeah, really good. Um, well, the last episode I had uh, talked about Reiki. I talked about uh, how we tend to... Language seems to be different. And I got some great responses from that. Uh, I got some great open responses, and I got some flack from it, too, from some of my uh, Christian friends. Not very many, actually, only one, uh, and that was okay, but it, this this person loved me lots and lots, and uh, very, very good friend of mine, and I thank him very much, And but it did get me uh, thinking a little bit more about terminology and words, and what do we, what do we use, and the funny thing is... So I'm raised Catholic, and I feel like I've been uh, not moved away from Catholicism at all, but seem to be moved more into living in the kingdom. Yeah, something to do with living in the kingdom that Jesus talked about and how we live in that kingdom here on earth. Yes, there is a, a full manifestation of the kingdom yet to come, because once we leave this earth... Uh, there is more. There is eternity. I actually read in a book um, about uh, that, and it was actually, um, I'm going to arm a lot. <laughs> I took a voice class, and they said, usually when you go um and write, and it's usually because you have nothing to say. So maybe I got nothing to say. But anyway, um, oh, there we go, um again. Uh, ah, oh yeah, okay. How many times do you do that? How many times do you do that when you talk? I was reading in this book, and I can't remember what I'm talking about now at all. Oh my gosh, I, my wife and I are starting to get into this phase of our life where we'll walk to the fridge and can't remember what we went to the fridge for, or I'll open the fridge door and it's actually something in the microwave I've been trying to get, so, but anyway, that's not what this podcast is about, but I will diverge off course sometimes and forget why what, what, what I was actually talking about at the time. Anyway, but I'm reading this book on Catholicism and it's it's, it's, it's a different kind of book. I actually thought, uh, I saw this book at the back of the church and I opened it up and there was some verse in it that really struck me. And I'm really big on living in the kingdom right now, that there's a kingdom here on earth. Oh, that's what I was going to say. I was reading from Wayne Dyer, and, and he said that uh, if life is eternal, if life is eternal and never ends, and that's what Christians believe, if life is eternal, then this that we live in right now is not actually life itself. There's much more. And I think that's something that Jesus Christ came to show us. And he came to show us about how to live, right? He showed us how to live on this earth, right? What we call life on earth. And uh, what Wayne Dyer was talking about was that if, if this is not actually life, how can we fear death? If this begins with dust and ends with dust, how can we fear death? Because there is no death. Life is eternal. And so anyway, I'm reading this Catholic book, 
and thinking it's going to start telling me about uh, sacraments and going to confession and I should do this and I should do that and it's a sin not to go to church on Sunday and that's what I think I'm going to read and it's by Matthew Kelly and instead instead I read about um, I read about how important it is to be Catholic and that Catholic is not about all these things that I'm talking about. Yes, those are byproducts and those are things about the Catholic Church, but the truth of living as a Catholic is to live in absolute love, to follow the first two commandments, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, your very being. And then the second commandment, to love your neighbor as yourself. And that when we seek happiness, because God has given us that desire for happiness, then we're also seeking God, because we're seeking love, and love is God, and God is love. And so truly what God has placed in us when he placed that desire for happiness in us is the desire for him. And that's what the Catholic Church represents, is the the desire and the journey to discover God. And when I read that, it was like so beautiful. It was that above and beyond everything else, right? Everything else is made to... Uh, help fulfill that, all the sacraments and everything else. He said that the role of the church, which is also us, is to unveil God, the mystery, the divineness of God to, to us and to help us achieve that inner transformation that brings us to God. And our job as church, because we are the church, our job is to also do that is to do that for everybody else that comes across our path, to unveil that mystery, that beauty, that path to God. And the beautiful thing is, is he talks about the path to God, that we all have a different path to God, not as in in Christianity we believe in uh, Jesus Christ and that Jesus came to show us the way to, to God. But he's talking about the, the journey that we take, the path, the journey that we take to God, to salvation, it is different in each one of us, right? The, the, the path to transformation is different in each one of us. So he was talking about, uh, if you look at Catholic saints, I don't know if you're into Catholic saints or not, but and if you look at Catholic saints and you look at the lives of the saints, right, they, you'll find St. Teresa of Lisieux, had a different path, a different journey because of her talents and her needs and and what she had. It was different than that of St. Francis of Assisi, right? St. Francis of Assisi's path was different than St. Augustine's. And St. Augustine's path is different than my path. My path is different than your path. And it was a matter of taking into account our talents, our gifts, and the desires uh, that that God has given each one of us. And so we are not to sit and look at each other person and say, well, I wish I was that person, or I wish I was this, or why come? how come I'm not like that? How come this person is like that and I'm not? Right? Or how come this person seems to be like a holy person and I don't? The thing is, we are all on our journey And in reality, we're all on our journey together. And it's through the grace that God gives us, each one of us. The grace that God gives each one of us. This um, Matthew Kelly, I guess he's a a Catholic, but also slash motivational speaker. And he's really good. I really got turned on to this book. And... um, in, in, in this book, he talks about, he says that God does not need your ideas. He does not need your ideas for like a better church or a better life or a better this or a better that or how you could do this better and things like that. He says, that's not needed. What is needed is for us to follow the Holy Spirit and follow the Holy Spirit's leading in our lives. And he talked about how the Holy Spirit, uh, Pope Benedict XVI, said that the Holy Spirit is the soul of your soul. And I thought that was such beautiful imagery. 
he had so many beautiful images in this book. And I'm only on chapter six. And and be honest with you, I'm listening to the audio book. I also have uh, the book book itself. But this is the audiobook version of it. So if you are Catholic or you're interested in what Catholic is, and I haven't read the whole thing, I know he's going to go into all the different things that Catholics do and how you can use them for your inner transformation uh, to really reveal God in your life. And he's going to talk about things like the rosary. He's going to talk about things like sacraments and all the things that we have in the Catholic Church. But it really uh, made me uh, fall in love all over again with the journey that, that that I've been on in this Catholic Church because God has never led me out of the Catholic Church. And uh, he might, not, you know, this isn't your journey. This is my journey, and that's what I'm sharing. And I know that the people I'm talking to, like you might not be Catholic. You might not even be Christian. And, and that that's fine and dandy with me. You are who you are, and I am who I am, and we're both on the journey to an, an enlightened journey and a reawakened journey. And I notice um, sometimes uh, the more I, I go on this path, and I know I'm kind of like fighting for words right now, but the more I go on this path, on this journey, which basically, like Richard Rohr says, leads you back to where you already are because you become who you already are. Right? You already have everything within you and you've already have God within you. You already have the Spirit of God within you. You have everything that you need, but what we do is we bury it sometimes. We've buried it over life and we have to um you know, just get back in there and mine that out and allow God to heal us. We have to get back on all that rubble that we've created and uh, things that we've destroyed in our life. And we have to get back into that and like just allow it, God, to heal, you know, all the hurts that are in us. And I just, I'm just wanting to tell you that this is a worthwhile journey to be on. And I don't really, I, I find myself rambling a little bit here, but I'm just, I guess I'm reiterating how powerful I believe the journey is, right? And it's not about the journey, it's about the destination. And the destination is not a point in your life. It is not a, a far, you know, like a finish line that you have to get to. It's just a point of being, and it's a point that you become more aware of. You become aware of who you already are. So it's like you come back. You go. It's like almost like you go full circle. You start, and then you go on this journey, and you go full circle right back to where you started. But you've got fresh eyes, fresh vision, fresh life. You just see things differently because you've become more aware and more enlightened. And all the podcasts that I've been doing uh, basically lead up to that. They basically lead up to that reawakening point. And it's something that I am getting to in that sense. I'm becoming more aware. I, I did say once before that uh, people talk about coming closer to God or they'll say, uh, Lord, come and be, right? But how can God come when he's already here? At, in the end of Matthew, he says, I'm with you always until the end of time. So how can... God who's already here, come. He's already here. So what happens? What can happen? The only thing that can happen is you can become more aware of that presence of God. You can become more aware of that presence of God. And one of the things I've learned, <clears throat> excuse me, on this journey, one of the things I've learned on this journey is that when God speaks to us and when he takes us on this journey, it's a gentle journey. It may not seem like that on the outside, but your awareness and your acceptance of it is a gentle journey from the inside. God will always be gentle with you. He'll always speak to you in gentle ways, even though it feels like sometimes he's got to hit you on the head with a two by four, not literally, but through the things in your life, through the experiences in your life, that God will send things. And, and if you're into this, the universe will scream at you and, and you know, throw things that, that make problems, issues in your life until you become aware of God trying to speak to you. 
And that's the beauty of this whole thing, is that God has showed us how to be gentle and, and to, to listen gently. That's a word that came to me not long ago about being gentle, like being quiet, being in a state of quietness, of calm. And it only comes with practice. I remember, uh, and I can't remember the book, it was about Elijah the prophet, and God says, I'm going to speak to you. I want to speak to you. So he sends him off into the desert, and and of course he's hungry, so he sits under this tree, and God feeds him. He sends him manna from heaven, and that kind of stuff manifests food for Elijah. And then Elijah gets up and continues on his journey and finds his cave, and he's waiting to hear from God, and it, and it gives all these scenarios about the earth shook violently, but God was not in the shaking, and and the thunder clapped, and the lightning struck, and but God was not in the the thunderous noise and the lightning, and then there was a huge fire or whatever it was, and but God was not in that, and then there was a tiny whisper, just a tiny whisper, and God was in the whisper. And so we have to bring our lives to the point where we could hear that whisper. We have to slow our lives down enough so we can hear that whisper. For me, I've found that lately, in the past uh, few weeks especially since I did my Reiki course, um, God has been waking me up at like 3, 4, 5 in the morning to get up and sit in the quiet, to meditate to allow him to speak to my inner self, to my heart of hearts, right? My soul of souls, however you want to describe it. But I've been getting up super, super early. And I know that if I don't get up, I won't want to get up later and do it. And so I, I've kind of gotten into this habit. It says it takes 21 days to create a habit, and I'm on day 21 today. And so I've been doing that for 21 days, getting up just whenever I wake up, which is, I mean, in the early that early mode. So anyway, uh, to meditate. And so hopefully this keeps going. And But I'm just excited that this journey is happening. And for me, it is life-transforming. And I, and I hope it is for you too. I want to make sure that you take the time to uh, listen, to become gentle. You have to become gentle if you want to line yourself up with the gentleness of God speaking to you. You have to become gentle. And I mentioned that in the last podcast. God will speak to you in your heart of hearts. He will speak to you in ways that you have never imagined. He'll speak to you through the things that you see. He will speak to you through your thoughts. He will speak to you through a magazine article. He'll speak to you through any which way that he can speak to you. And always God will tell you how much he loves you. He will always lead you into a life of inner transformation of love. The whole purpose of this journey is to love. To love, to love, to love. To know that you are loved, to experience that love, and to love others. And the more that we do that, the more the world changes. When you increase yourself in the sense of you increase your awareness, you become the better version of you, then the world becomes better. When you fall into self-defeating things like anger and hatred and jealousy, then the world falls into that. Whatever you become, the world becomes. And I'm not saying the whole world changes, but you add or you take away. You might not think you do, but you do. Anyway, um... I'm just really excited to be here and talk to you. I know I've kind of been rambling quite a bit, and maybe I, maybe I won't even release this episode. I just sat down, turned the iPad on, plugged the mic in, and away I went, right? And, uh, and here I am just talking right off the top of my head. Don't know if I'm even saying anything that makes sense to you, but I'm just saying whatever's coming out. Um, this book I've been reading is called Redis- Rediscover Catholicism. Uh, 
and, and it's a really good book. And if you're a Catholic and, and you, you know, maybe you, you've kind of like got disillusioned with the church and and with some priests and, and things that have been going on in the church, I encourage you to read this book. It's by Matthew Kelly. Uh, Matthew is two, eight, two T's, M-A-T-T-H-E-W. Kelly is K-E-L-L-Y. You can buy the book. Or you can buy the audio book quite easily. Um, but give it a, a listen to or give it a watch uh, or give it a read if you like to read. And anyway, uh, another book I've been reading is Wayne Dyer, Dr. Wayne Dyer and the Power of Intention. Really good book. Really good book. And uh, so anyway, um, thanks for listening. This has been a shorter podcast. It is episode 60. Oh my gosh, I'm almost turning 60 in another year. But anyway, um, thank you so much for putting up with all my ads and ums and my episode this week you can go to the real truth about you.com and you can download uh, more episodes i am in the process of because i moved it over to a new website host provider i am in the process of putting up my episodes i think i'm only at episode 20 right now but you can still get this one this one will go right there so uh, the real truth about you.com is alive and active so you can go there so thanks a lot for listening in love you tons and have yourselves an awesome 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 week